Hello, welcome to this video, my friends. My name is Lindrin, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about why you need to understand the math in your business in order to scale and grow your business. The reasons why I wanna talk about this is comes from a simple story. Yesterday, I'm having a conversation with one of my partners. One of my partners, his name is Shiv. He's an amazing, amazing guy. He just moved from the UK to Dubai. And funny story, he wasn't. I wasn't supposed to take him in as a partner. The reasons why I wasn't supposed to take him in is when he reached out last year in September, his business wasn't actually at a stage where it was like viable, where it was like, okay, you're doing about $300,000 a month. We can actually scale this to a million a month. And here's the pathway, here's the tools, here's the systems, here's the people, here's the processes that you need and off you go. He was at a stage where he was still in idea stage. In fact, he had a broken business. And the only reasons why I took him in is because Shiv, six years ago, he was my copywriter. So he was actually like taking all of my content, all of my podcasts, and he was turning into amazing email copy. He would send it off to the list and he was amazing. It was amazing. And one day he, had, he decided to leave to go off to do his own thing. This was about six years ago. Fast forward six years later, he's actually now in this space of training copywriters and helping copywriters like run their own business and get more clients. He comes to me in September, he's got this idea and he's got this business and he says, hey Lynn, would you consider taking me on to partner? And I'm like, well, what do you have? What are you currently doing? And he's like, well, I almost teach copywriters. Like we, we basically help copywriters write better copy. And so all of these copywriters have clients and they come to us and we like do copy critiques and we just help them upskill them in copywriting. It sounds like a fair deal. And I'm like, well, like, are you currently doing well? Like what's, what's it like? What's the acquisition cost? Like, are you bringing in clients? Are you making money? And it's like, oh, we're kind of drying up at the moment. And I said, how many clients do you have? He's got like half a dozen clients or, or a dozen clients per se. And I go, well, are you running, well, like how are you getting clients? And he's like, well, word of mouth at the moment. And I said, well, how are you getting clients predictably? Because word of mouth is really like unpredictable system unless you have a referral process that you actually build out, which you spend money to incentivize people. Like you might give away something like an Apple Watch to everybody that refers people. Or you actually have to build a proper system and you have to invest money in a system to make it more predictable. Do you have a predictable system? And he was like, no. And I was like, oh, look, I really like you. I like what you're doing. I know you're legit at what you do. Like he's an amazing skilled copywriter. He's done it for like at least 10 years now. Like the guys, the guy probably started when he was 16. And so long story short, I take him on as a partner. And I said, look, I will take you on as a partner. This is going to be like a really fun project. I, I really like working with you. You're a really young, hungry dude. I like this. I like what you have to offer. And the craziest part is when I look at partnerships, I don't just look at it in terms of revenue. I look at it in terms of like, oh, how can I tap into his network to bring in copywriters into like all my other partnerships so that it's all a win-win. And so by taking him in, everybody else wins inside of my circle. So anyway, I take him on. And the very first thing, what we, what we do is we actually rechange his offer. And the reasons why we rechange this offer is because in order, like we discover that in order for him to succeed, his copywriters need to be succeeding. And I said, well, on average, like how much money are your copywriters making? How many clients are they getting? They're getting like one to two clients and they retain a client. So they, they, the copywriters generally, their pitch is like this. Hey, Lynn, I'll come work with you. I'll write all your copy. You pay me 3000 a month and I'll, I'll write all your copy, right? It's retain. It's kind of like retainer work and it's the worst offer. It's actually like slave work, right? It's slave work and it's a bad offer. And the reasons why it's a bad offer, and I sat down with him. I said, bro, like this is a bad offer. The reasons why like you and I disappeared was because you sat down and when you were writing copy for me, it was like, you're writing all these email copy, you're writing ad copy, you're like, I was hounding. It was like, he was getting like Slack heart attacks, right? He'd open the Slack channel, talk to me six years ago, and he's just, he's just got a pile of shit that he has to build up. And there'd be like a Slack attack. And the reasons why it's a bad offer is because it doesn't actually work out for anybody. The very first person it doesn't work out for is it doesn't work out for me. Because I'm having to think about, like as the business owner, I'm having to think about shit that Shiv needs to do when he doesn't have any work. And at the same time, Shiv needs to do work that I give to him and he's a slave for $3,000 a month. I don't know about you, but $3,000 a month doesn't actually get you very far in today's day and age. You know, if it's Australian dollars, even worse than US dollars, at least US dollars, you might be able to make it, but you get the point. So I'm like, it's a really bad offer. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, business owners don't want to do it. And in the end, the copywriters burn out. It's a, it's a, it's a lose-lose situation. Like either way, it doesn't work out. Like the longevity is not there because the business owner will sign you on and then they've got a massive load of work. The copywriter can't deliver. There's like tension inside a Slack channel. There's like, it's employee mindset. And it's like, oh, I didn't see it that way. And I said, well, the reasons why um, your business is, isn't growing is simply because your copywriters, it's not his, Shiv's offer. It's not Shiv's offer, right? It's the copywriter's offer. Okay, his client's offer isn't actually a great value proposition. So the very first thing that we did, you know, I said, look, look, like, I'm thinking about this in terms of me. What 
would Lin have wanted Shiv to do back in the day? So if Shiv was approaching me right now and Shiv and, and one of his students, right, was like, hey, Lin, I'll write all your copy. I'll do, you know, I'll be on a retainer, pay me $2,000 a month. And in fact, I'll have the first month free. Just like, I'll write all your copy and just tell me what to do. You, you have your email, social media post, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, even then, it's not about the money. Because I could say yes, but then it becomes like my time in thinking about what he should do. It's my time thinking about, oh, I have to then critique his copy. My time to recognize that, oh my God, the tonality is not off. Like there's a lot of things around like rewriting, being a copywriter for a brand. Tonality is off. You didn't get the stories right. You didn't know enough about me and what I, I, I what value I want to bring to the customer. You didn't have enough expertise. You have all these little obstacles. And then what ends up happening? Right. This is why I just uh, me and copywriters and retainer people never worked out is because we simply go back and forth. And all we're doing is we're wasting time going back and forth instead of producing a result and outcome. And I said, look, Shiv, even if your copywriter came, I wouldn't take them on. But and then we started to sit down and he said, well, like, what would they need to say to you in order for you to take them? On? And so we sat down and I said, look, the, the offer is this. If I was launching a new product, like let's say I was trying to sell a course, and I'm selling a course on like Facebook ads, right? And they know I'm, let's say hypothetically. If they came to me and said, hey, Lynn, we'll launch your course. We'll do all the copy. We'll do all the promo for you. And we'll launch it. And like whatever sales you make, like you don't have to pay us anything. Whatever sales would take a piece of the cut, right? Or a small piece of the pie, like an 80-20. Like they do all the work. They take 20%. They sell my offer and it's all good to go. And the second offer is if I don't like the copy, then it doesn't go out. Like, that's it. We, we just like can it. It doesn't work. Okay. And I was like, that's a brilliant offer. Because I would take that on if I, if I had a product to launch, if I was selling something to someone, right? If I had a course, if I had like, I don't know, a membership, whatever it is, and I'm, I'm selling something online. I'm like, oh, we could do that. And, and better yet, like I thought to myself, oh my God, like all these people would need this because firstly, the offer is fantastic because it's, it's a win-win. The, the client doesn't have to do anything. The client doesn't have to raise a finger. The copywriter does all the work. The copywriter takes a piece of the pie. It's split 80-20. There's none of that, like, it's all focused on outcomes and none of this, like, interaction. Like, if you've ever worked with a, a copywriter or, or somebody on retainer, there's, there's that interaction. So I'm sitting down with him. We changed the offer, and I'm like, this is brilliant, okay? You make that pitch. You tell your clients to make that pitch. You re-pitch it. You make that pitch. And then, basically, once you get a client, then... You've got a client, the lifetime value of the client actually increases over time. So with retainer, you might get retainer for one, two, three months until like, you know, you run out of work, you find like the copywriter burns out, whatever. But the way that this works is like, if you just get in for that first promotion and you do an amazing job, you've got the next promotion. You've got like Valentine's Day. You've got the founder's birthday. You've got like one year anniversary of like the company's uh, birthday, right? You've got Christmas, you've got Easter, you've got Black Friday, you've got Cyber Monday, you've got all that the whole world is constructed around this idea of like creating holidays to sell more shit as a reason to sell more shit. And I'm like, holy crap. Once you have one person, you increase the lifetime value because now you, if you do a good job on that first interaction, you just you plan out the next 12 months of promos. So we got to work. This was September. In October, we we hit 100k a month. We went from like 10,000 a month, I think it was currently doing that was just retainer. It wasn't consistent to like hundred thousand dollars a month in that moment. And the issues arise here. And the reasons why I want to share this with you is because the issues arise when like fulfillment happens and when we have to actually sit down and, and go, okay, well, we have all these copywriters coming through and like they're, they're pitching people different products and we need to figure out exactly like how do we how do we train these copywriters? We can give them the templates and the tools. But then a lot of the times it's the mindset. And so we're approaching October, you're approaching like November, December, lots of these clients were winning because they were getting Black Friday. And then Christmas comes along and it's a really weird thing. He's sitting there and he's like going, well then like, you know, we want to start this other agency, like this promo agency where, where we actually write the copies ourselves. Because one thing that I nailed into him was I was like, hey, you have to lead by example. If you're teaching people how to do this, you have to do this better than they can. You have to have the biggest agency. And then at least then it's got some viability. And so... December, we launch an agency, and this is when shit starts to fall downhill because we go off track. Like we're doing 100,000 a month here, and instead of scaling this and making this actually better, we then start to verge off to then go, hey, he wants to build this agency, and he's like, well, I can just run this myself and we'll build this agency. So we build out a new offer, and then January hits. January hits, and the craziest thing in January is that business starts to slow down, people switch off, they go on holidays, yada, da da da. As February hits, we're kind of like going down to like 30,000 a month. And I'm sitting there going, hey, bro, let's look at this for a second. You want to do this thing. And this thing that you had was already working, right? And right now you're like, you're trying to create this thing that hasn't been proven to work. I sat down with him yesterday. And I'm like, 
bro, let's just look at the numbers for a second because he's all in on this. And I'm like, hey, man, for a second, hold on. This thing that you have here was at 100,000. It did really well. It was at $100,000 a month. We got it up from $10,000 a month. It did really well. It's got legs to do through two, three, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000 a month. And yet our focus here is on this new thing that you want to create because you kind of like this, but you like that better. Is that what I'm hearing you say? And he's like, yes. And I'm like, you are falling into this mindset and this trap where at the very first sign of resistance, right? You have this thing, you build it. There's resistance in it because there's more problems. As you have to understand, like, the more you grow your business, the more problems you'll have. As you grow this thing, you have more problems. You have fulfillment problems. You don't have enough stuff. You have customer service problems. You have, like, clients complaining problems. You have people just throwing you under the bus problems. Like, there's just this whole exposure of growth that you don't recognize that's on the other side. And instead of working through it, we then choose to, like, deflect and, and build this other thing that we think is actually going to do better and it's better for us. And we assume that there's not going to be any different problems. So I tell him, hey, man, let's just look at the numbers. We sit there looking at the spreadsheets for a second and we go, fuck, what are we doing? We're an idiot. And so the, the lesson of this is this. Life can be chaotic. Business can be chaotic. But the things that don't lie to us are the numbers. And when you can step back and look at your spreadsheets, look at your P&L sheets, and you have the numbers. What do the numbers mean? Well, how much do we spend on advertising? How many conversations are we getting? How many sales are we making from this channel? And can we improve this? And can we make the numbers better? And is this viable? When we make a decision based on the numbers, you never lose. When you make a, a decision based on emotions and feelings, you'll always lose. And the thing that I want to share today with you is that business is a game of match. Okay, if you want to grow your business, you simply look at the numbers. In order for him to grow this business, this training, this recruitment, this whole new copyright, teaching copywriters, this whole brand new model that actually works, that's a fantastic offer, that gets people results, that increases lifetime, fucking phenomenal, right? In order for him to grow that, we just needed to look at the economics. And it was crazy because it was like October, we were spending 30, we made 100,000 in cash. And it was like, well, we hadn't even spent the time to sit down and optimize things before like shit got really busy. It went into the new year. We sat down into the new year looking back at February going, well, this is slow. We had, there's a new idea in this new year, right? He goes from UK to Dubai. There's all, this, there's all this shit happening. And then we sit down here and we're like, hold on a second. We had this thing. It was really good. We didn't even optimize it. What I mean by optimize it is like we, we spent 30,000. We made 100,000 in a month. And we didn't actually optimize it. We didn't even make, like figure out, oh, we can make the ads better. Like, it, it's like the craziest thing. When, when you understand that you can turn 30 into 100 and it's like you can stack the odds in your favor with paid advertising, knowing that the better you get at writing ads, the better you get at your funnels, the better you get at following up your leads, the better you get at training your salespeople, you stack the odds in your favor. Like that 30K could have turned into 250. Because if we had just put the focus and the shift in optimizing and improving, I've done this time and time again. And so it was one of the mistakes that he was going down, which innately I could sit there stepping back. And it's great because I can step back. And the reasons for my partnership with a lot of my clients is because I can step back and, and they're in the day to day. So whilst they're working in the business, I can work on the business and help them see this. And so I wanted to share this lesson with you because no matter where you are, it, it is important that you have somebody who can look on the outside of your business who is not emotionally attached to all the problems inside of your business to actually step you back, pull you out of spider, spider webs and help you problem solve this. So that being said, my friends, that is the lesson of the day. And I hope you got value from, from this video. If you did, don't forget, like, subscribe this video. It helps the algorithm out. It helps my blue and orange backgrounds go all over the interwebs. Have an amazing day. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you and bye-bye for now.